There is so much unnecessary death and disability. The cigarette remains the leading preventable cause of death. Efforts by states, school districts, and parents were no match for the enormous marketing budget of tobacco companies. The rise and fall of cigarettes is and will continue to be one of the most important public health stories in history. Here you have a glyph showing tobacco use. And this was part of a ritual that generally did not involve inhaling. Now, Christopher Columbus took tobacco back to the old world. Youthful curiosity, basic rebelliousness, or what your role models do in advertising and marketing to young people, it was absolutely pervasive. Nothing but the best for Mr. Ricardo. You see how easy it is to keep a man happy? this vital scientific truth that nicotine causes widespread dependency on a product that kills roughly half of all long-term users was well understood privately within the industry. The cigarette makers agreed to a campaign to deny the evidence, claiming that we don't know the truth. What was their philosophy? Doubt is our product. Statistical associations do not and cannot prove cause and effect. It is not a closed case. There is another side to the issue. It impaired the proper functioning of science. If the lawyers get to decide what projects the scientists do, that, that's a red flag right there. 50% of all doctors were smoking. And, you know, much of the public really couldn't understand how a behavior that was so widespread and accepted could cause major health problems. Mental cigarettes increase the addiction to the tobacco product. Now the African-American population has been bombarded with marketing of mental cigarettes. The kind of training and gestures here of Harvard brand candy cigarettes. So you could be just like daddy. Some of the industry behavior that occurred over many years continues to this day. Congressman, cigarettes and nicotine clearly do not meet the classic definitions of addiction. The cigarette makers have told us for decades that smoking is an expression of liberty. I remember when my grandmother was dying from emphysema. Where was the freedom in that? in the failure to be able to breathe. Five trillion cigarettes smoked every year, and that's enough to circle the globe more than 10,000 times. When one considers all of these prominent causes of premature illness and death in our society that you see here, smoking kills more people than all of them put together. Smokers aren't deliberately smoking for the tar and the cancer and the lung disease and the heart disease, but their brains have been rewired. Nicotine e-cigarettes are emerging as a popular tool for smoking cessation. The public doesn't know this because cigarettes are enormously profitable. I try to keep it simple, phase out the sale of commercial tobacco products. We don't go into these jobs because they're easy. We go into them because mm. they have the potential to not only make people's lives better, but to save people's lives. In this course, you'll receive a strong foundation in the history of smoking and tobacco use, its health and public health impact, and how cigarette smoking remains to this day the leading preventable cause of death globally. Substantially reducing such use represents one of the most important opportunities to improve public health in the U.S. and around the world.